All right, hello everyone, welcome back. So today we plan to conclude the last part about graph neural nets. At the same time, today's lecture is also the last part for the deep learning course. I mean, we will talk about the last models we plan to introduce in this course for you, which is about the GRS knight and the graph bird. So from there then, we'll see that they are both graph neural nets. However, we try to incorporate some more advanced techniques for building them. The first one, we try to incorporate the resilient learning into the model architecture building. And second one, relies on the bird models instead as encoder for learning the representations of graph data instead. So today is the last lecture we plan to have for this course. And we still have one more class. And in the next class, we plan to discuss more about the final exam for you. And we will talk about the final exam in the next talk instead. And we also plan to provide you with an overview for the materials to be covered in the final exam in the next lecture as well. OK, so let's come back to the today's talk instead. So let's talk about the GRS night and the growth birds. Here's our line for today's talk. In the very beginning, we will discuss a very important problem, which is called a suspended animation problem. Also, it is also named as overstimulation problem I mean, in learning graph neural nets. If you have ever tried to play with the GCM model on the graph data we provide with you in the project stage 5, I mean, you you can try to build a very deep model architecture I mean, with multiple layers, and you can see if this model can work or not. According to our observation, if we have a GCM model with like 6 layers or 5 layers, then this model cannot work well anymore with the graph data we provide you in the, in the project. And we name this problem as a suspended animation problem in today's talk, and it is also called the overstimulation problem in some other papers uh, in state. And to address the suspended animation problem, we will discuss a very important model, which is called the GRS Knight, or the full name is called Graph Residual Learning Knight. And we try to incorporate the residual learning techniques into building the graph neural nets. So besides the GRS Knight, we plan to also discuss another very important model, which is called the Graph Birds. And we provide you with the overall architecture of the graph bird model. And we also talk about the internal architecture components of the graph bird as well, which covering the graph batching as well as position embedding and encoder, and together with the model pre-training and fine-tuning as well. Okay, so let's talk about the first problem, I mean the suspend animation problem in learning graph neural nets. So I hope you still remember we have been discussing the graph neural nets with SGC operator for building the GCM model, right? If you still remember, given a graph data input like this one, I mean, we have so many different nodes and they also extend connected to each other by the edges as well, right? So we try to learn the embedding vectors for all the nodes inside this graph data inputs. We learn the embedding of nodes by incorporating all the neighborhood information state. So here, if we take this A node as a target node, we can learn the embedding by incorporating all the neighborhood, I mean, its neighborhood inside the graph structure, right? Which covers the B, C, D, E, F as shown here. So given a target node A and we try to incorporate all the neighborhood information to define its embedding vector, we can define its embedding vector as HA vector as shown here, right? which will be an embedding vector for the node A. So we can learn the HA this embedding vector by incorporating all the vectors from the neighborhood instead, right? like HB, HC, and HD, HF as shown here. We incorporate all the neighborhood embedding vectors with this uh, SGC operator, which is defined by the neural net as shown here, which is not a black box as shown here. Right? At the same time, for the B's vector embedding vector, we also define the embedding vector as with another SGC operator by aggregating their neighborhood information state, right, and so forth. Besides the general architecture, we also go deeper into the NN black box as shown here with the formula I will provide in the next page before already, right? If you still remember, I mean, I would mention we can build a very deeper GC model by stacking multiple SGC operating layers on top of each other. If we can learn the nodes embedding vector layer by layer by aggregating the neighborhood information. Uh, so at the very beginning, we can initialize all the nodes embedding to be the row features, and we can learn the nodes embedding layer by layer with formula as shown here. Okay, as shown here, if we plan to learn the A's embedding vector HA, I mean, of the case layer, we can aggregate the node layer representations, I mean, of all the neighborhood, actually, in the formula, right? So we define gamma A denoting the neighborhood set of A, and we enumerate all the nodes in the neighborhood set to aggregate their representations by summing them together. Here we also assign each neighborhood with a parent term, which is denoted by the reverse of its degree. In other words, for the nodes, I mean neighborhood nodes with high degrees, we try to penalize them as their representations with small weights instead, right? Because here we have a reverse of 1 over gamma v, this degree of the nodes, right? So by aggregating all the neighborhood representation together, I mean, which is parameterized by W1, we also added this one with the A's lower layer representation as well, which is parameterized by W2 as shown here. Both W1 and W2 they are the parameter to be learned inside the model architecture. 
So we know that those representation layer by layer and here the last layer of the model architecture, which is the case layer, I mean the capital case layer, as shown here. We can define the final representation learned by the node for the in the model as A's final embedding vector, as shown here. So this formula is for define the embedding vector for one single node in the graph. Where the manager can aggregate all the embedding vector for all the nodes in the graph I and mean, together by defining them as a matrix as HK as shown here. So by using the W1 and W2 with a shear weight, we can rewrite this formula with for one single node by aggregating them into one single formula for all the nodes in the graph in state. We have HK equals sigma mode. Inside we have A hat times HK minus 1 times WK, right? This WK denoting the shear weights for W1 and W2 as shown here. It's HK minus 1 denoting the lower layer representation for all the nodes in the graph. It's A hat is a normalized matrix for the whole graph, right? Based on the adjacent matrix. In this, we can learn the representation of the nodes layer by layer with K layers as shown here. This capital K denotes the depth of the model architecture. Then you may wonder how deep this model architecture can be. I mean, how large is K we can assign with them? We can provide with a new strategy for the performance of the GC model with different depths. So, I mean, we illustrate the performance of the GC model on the core data set in this page. And the depth denoted how many this SGC operator we use in the model architecture. And on the right hand side, we show you the plot of the training I mean, accuracy as well as testing accuracy of the GC model with different depths, I mean, on the core data set. According to the project, we find that the full GC model with two layers, three layers, and four layers, we can train them very well, right? And however, when it comes to the GC model with five layers, six layers, and even deeper, then we will not be able to train them anymore, and their training curve is a flat line as shown here, right? It will be similar for the testing accuracy plus. I mean, if we have a GC with two layers, three layers, and four layers, we can still achieve very decent accuracy in the neural classification task. However, when it comes to a deeper GC model with five layers and even more, then the testing accuracy will be a flat line as you hear. Then this will be a very interesting problem in learning the GC model. And we define this problem as a suspend animation problem because they are not responding to the training data anymore, no matter how many data which fit them into the model architecture. So we define this problem as a suspended animation problem. It describes the problem as the GM model architecture goes deeper and reaches certain depth limit. Then this model will not be responding to any training data anymore and becomes not a of actually. We also named this uh, corresponding uh, depth limit as the GS suspended animation limit as well. So for example, for the GC model on the core data set, the depth will be about 5. And if we have a GC model with 5 layers or even deeper, then this model will not be working very well for the core data set. We observe this problem is very common for many GM models also on many data sets. So it is a very common problem. So besides the suspend animation problems, some other papers also name the problem as the over smoothing problem for GM models as well. So I mean they're generally referring to the same thing actually in describing the learning problem we may encounter in learning the GM models. So we plan to illustrate why the GM model will suffer from this problem. So before we talk about the causes, I'd like to provide you with uh, some background knowledge first, which is called the six degrees of separation problem. This actually is a concept we borrow from the social science. It describes the social connection among people in the real world, in the society. So according to the six degrees of separation, all people are six or even fewer social connections far away from each other. In other words, why six different people, then you can connect to all the people in the world, actually. And when it comes to the graph scenario, we have a very similar observation for node connections. We observe that the nodes can be extensively connected to each other via their neighbors or via their friends. And the distance among those are short in graphs, and maybe it is even shorter than six. Because of this six degree of separation problem, it will also have some impact on the GM learning. So for a GM with deep architecture, like more than six years, then each node will integrate information from all their neighbors, right? And the neighbor can further integrate the information from all the neighbors and so forth. Yeah, in other words, each node will be able to integrate all the information from all the nodes in the graph if the distance among nodes is shorter than six. Then via six layers, we can integrate all the information from all the nodes in the graph for learning each node's representation actually. Because each node relies on all the almost the same information, then the learning embedding vector will be very similar actually. 
So this is some high-level idea about the impact of the 6 degrees separation concept on learning the GM models. Besides this high-level idea, we can also go deeper into the formulas to illustrate why we may suffer from this problem. So first of all, you may wonder why we have to build deeper GM models. Because sometimes we may have very complex imports, like for the features, they can be easier the draw features, right? There can all be some images or some next or some text data in state. So this kind of complex input may require we have a very deep GM model in state. Although sometimes the nodes, amount of nodes, they may have longer distance dependency relationship among each other. Then both of these kind of scenarios may call for the deep GM models. Then we can understand why the GM model will suffer from the suspend animation problem by rewriting the formula we showed before. I hope you still remember for the define the SGC operator, we can define node embedding vectors layer by layer. Okay, for example, we can define the node embedding for the case layer by integrating all the neighborhood from the lower layer instead, right? We can define this one as the activation function inside we have a hat times hk minus one times wk, right? Or wk minus one as we show here. See, this is the SGC operator we defined before. Actually, this SGC operator can be rewritten in another way. By extracting this a hat times hk minus 1, we can define this term as a temporary variable, like a tk as shown here. So by defining the a hat times hk minus 1 as tk, we can further rewrite the formula we show here with two formulas in state. The first one is tk equals to a hat times hk minus 1, and the second one is hk equals renew Inside we have tk times wk minus 1. And the second one is very easy, right? This one is just one foreign connection layer, right? I mean, given a input like tk, we can time this one with, with one variable, and we can further fit this one into an activation function to learn its embedding vectors, right? This is the foreign connection layer we defined before, right? Similar to the multi layer perception with one single layer. Then it comes to the first layer. This is why it defines the tk. It's a, this temporary variable equals to a hat times hk minus 1. We can name this one as the Markov chain layer in our previous paper. I mean, it describes the random walk among the nodes actually in the in the graph. So we know that this foreign connection layer may cause some potential problems, but we are still be able to build a foreign connection layer with like a multi layer perception with ten layers with no problem. So generally, for the conventional deep learning models with foreign connection layers, we will not suffer from this suspend animation problem actually. Then the main cause for the problem is highly likely to be caused by the MC layer we define here for the Markov chain layer, right? It describes the propagation among the nodes in the graph and based on the connection among them. And according to one of our scenario, if we have a deeper GC model with multi layer of the SGC operator we define here, in other words, we are stacking multiple MC layer together with the FC layer we define here on top of each other. And as defined by one of the scenario proposed in our previous work, if we have a model architecture by stacking multiple amount of chain layer on top of each other, then the nodes embedding vector will be converging to a, a stationary distribution. In other words, if we have multiple Markov chain layers stacking on top of each other, then we will be converging all the nodes embedding vector to the same embedding vector in state. Then it will be causing a problem, right? Because if all the nodes they have the same embedding vector, then we will not be able to classify them anymore. That's the reason why if we have a deeper model architecture with not more than 5 years, with more than 5 layers, then we will not be able to train them anymore because all the nodes in the graph will have a similar embedding vectors. However, we examine them with different labels. Then we cannot classify them anymore based on the GCM model, right? So this kind of scenario can illustrate the reason why if we have a very deeper I mean, GCM model with multiple SGC layers, we will not be able to classify the nodes with the GCM model anymore. Because I mean, all the nodes embedding vectors will be converged to the same representation with the multiple layer Markov chain layers on top of each other. Okay, so this is the reason why if we have a very deeper GM models and they will converge into the same embedding vectors for all the nodes and we cannot use them for classifying the nodes anymore. And that's the reason why we will suffer from the suspend animation problem in learning the classification results for the nodes with GCM models.